Hello YouTube viewers, welcome to my show Computer Web Testing. In today's episode, we're gonna talk about micro LEDs, display technology. So let's dive right into it. Well, first we have to understand what the heck it is. In simplest term, it is a backlit free display technology. Basically, each sub pixel, basically a pixel is divided into three core categories, R, G, B. Each of them is called a sub pixel. In this scenario, sub pixel itself will illuminate the light. That is the core difference between uh, LCD and uh, basically micro LED. Now, sub pixel. Now, we have this kind of technology. If you have seen any event display, which are like, you know, stadium side or a, a concert and all that, those are using these itself. Now again, it's not necessary they are using exact same these three LED. Sometimes they have RGB LED itself, like all these three diodes would be in one LED. They use that. Now again, it does work. It's awesome, and you can find them in like you know 200 inches to 500 inches uh, display size, or sometimes even larger than that. Uh, and it's quite successful, popular. However, their inherent limitation is that you cannot get close to them. Like not only it will roast your eyeballs. It's uh, if you get close enough, you can easily see individual pixels. So PPI, basically pixel per inch, is not that good. So somebody came up with the idea hey why not we make this as small as uh, basically pixels on your sensor if you've seen your camera sensors those have something that is small enough to compare against this basically uh, pixels in your um, uh, smartphone and, uh, or DSLRs are generally measured in micrometers that's why the micro LEDs are here this is also in micro scale so it's quite amazing to give it, get it down to that uh, small scale it makes it unperceivable to anything like even you need a good microscope to see it and you need an electron microscope to actually make out what the hell is happening so you can understand like somebody took this made it as small as that on top of that you might wonder how the heck it's possible like these puppies are big hot and complicated structure how the heck somebody shrunk it down to this much the foundational reason why this is possible now not like you know 50 years ago is simply because we are moving away from silicon uh, and we are moving into gallium now if you're familiar with uh, 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 technologies r d behind the scene kind of technology you must be hearing the fact that we have reached a maximum potential of silicon like if silicon had let's say 100 uh, capabilities we have reached a point where we are extracting 99 out of it is it's like we cannot push it any further like we can refine the design but we cannot get more out of it it's like yeah it's this is efficient in this design it's a bit more but you get the point like we maxed it out however there is another semiconductor there are a lot of semiconductors in uh basically periodical gallium is one of them however gallium is not that Textile, uh, basically, it's not as awesome as silicon. However, it is awesome at power handling. That is why gallium, like, uh, you can right now buy gallium based, uh, basically, charger, turbo chargers, and superchargers, which are like 20% uh, smaller than silicon counterpart. Again, that's how it starts. Over time, gallium will take over almost all power adapters and things of that nature simply because it's much more efficient. And I can easily see electric cars are also investing into this simply because it's much more efficient and much more power handling capacity. Not only it will make you smaller, lighter, it will also make you more efficient. So that is the trend that is happening. And on this trend, somebody made this using gallium as a uh, backbone. So first thing you will think about, don't we have this kind of technology in terms of OLED? Short answer would be absolutely yes. However, you have to understand the O part, basically organic compound, aka carbon polymers that we have, it degrades inherently by use. It, it's not uh, independent of the use cycle. Basically, it's not something it does not care. Basically, like if you take LEDs, normal good quality LEDs, it can last for 20,000 hours without even giving it up unless you roast it. So uh, when you are comparing that to OLED, OLED is like in 100 hours to 800 hours. If you have continuous use, it will be like, yeah, I can't take this anymore. So it degrades over time. Now, when I say degrades, it does not mean like it becomes 100% useless, but over time you can easily spot it like, hey, this is, this is no longer working for us. So it's uh, okay for mobile phones because nobody's expecting their mobile phone to be there for like, you know, more than few years, like not even few years, people, uh, I'm replacing my phones in around every two years or because I buy mid-range phones. Uh, but you get the idea, like people are expected to change their mobile phone. However, for TVs, for computer monitors specifically, it's something that you put and forget. Uh, it will, OLED is not fitted for that because it will degrade over time and in terms of brightness how bright it can go it is not that bright simply because it's a it's something else that is trying to be something else so it does emit light a lot of light 800 nits is no laughing matter uh, because if you have a cheap monitor there is very good chance it's limited to 300 nits so you can understand 800 nits is no laughing matter however it's useless in outdoor if you go into any cinema production and if you see monitors that are used in broad daylights those start at 1000 nits and go as high as 5000 nits 
so you can understand that it's no laughing matter like 800 is a serious limitation it's not a oh it would be better to have it it's no issue if you don't know it's an issue on top of that because of hdr specification uh, the maximum uh, brightness you need for full hdr specification is 1000 nit so can amoled push that yes they can push it but they will degrade themselves much faster so uh, lg would be in a position where like i can make oled that is awesome but it will last only one or two years and if you are spending in that kind of money people are like dude i want this thing to last so you get the idea like it's not that bright and not only that it does not last very long on top of that because it's a quote of unquote things trying to do quote and quote things it's not very efficient basically if you take the electron to photon conversion efficiency it's not that high basically it's much better than lcd but it's not as better as it could be however it does have one ace up its sleeve uh, it's flexible we have been making it for long enough and we know how it does is that we not only can make flexible out of it we can make stretchable out of it this is a amoled display technology that was demonstrated by samsung in 2017 Yes, that's a stretch like that literally pokes out and it still keeps working and it also goes down also. So it's not like stretching in one direction, it has dual direction stretch. Okay? So OLED will be there. I can easily see OLED if uh, folding phones take over, flexible uh, smartwatches take over. I can easily see OLED to be there like forever. It's just that uh, for mobile phones, micro LED will replace it. So what are the main benefits why we want like we just went into OLED heck I got my first OLED device my first mobile phone with OLED now so like why the heck we want to replace it so quickly is there any tangible benefit first benefit is uh, basically it's longer lasting because again now you can have a micro LED uh, TV uh, TV monitor or computer monitors that will last for decades that's the first advantage second it's more efficient so basically in terms of uh, you know watt to photons conversion it's much more efficient so every uh, that also reduces the heat output of your monitor and display and all that also makes it much more efficient over time so not only you will get uh, something that has the same contrast as OLED uh, it will be just much more brighter and it will also go last longer while consuming less power so all those is awesome and in terms of uh, you know, how bright it can be made here's the interesting part it can push upwards of 1 million nits as of now the only way to achieve that kind of brightness is using a laser projector systems so why is that important now you may think okay that's something that you know somebody did in lab to show it or prove it well this allows some very interesting thing think of this way your smartwatch while you are indoors and all that you barely need 500 nits it's like more than enough however when you are out broad door and if sun is like this coming in this angle your display has to crank itself to 20,000 uh, you know nits again if it's made out of micro led for that short burst it can do that and you will be like hey i can easily read whatever the hell is happening on my display so that that allows sun time uses so you can have outdoor televisions or flatter things with much more dynamic rays. that's why you will no longer need you know local dimming for getting high contrast so it's quite useful on top of that right now if you want awesome contrast in your projectors the only option is DLP simply because it uh, you know bounces light off in the other direction if uh, the pixel is supposed to be black so LC uh, LCD based projector has the same issue it's just that black does not go to black TLP does allow black to be black however it's just wasting light simply because that's what this mirrors are doing is like okay if supposed to be black okay point it in a black black wall if it's supposed to go out of lens point it out of lens if it's supposed to be black just point it here so you get the idea like it is inherently wasteful now uh, these puppies uh, i've provided a lot of videos on i would urge you to see that uh, they are making something that can directly replace this chip and not only will it make it smaller much more efficient in every way uh, overall it will be much more longer lasting also and cheaper also so like again once it reaches mass production not right now once it reaches mass production so that is quite amazing that you, and in the future you can have a you know luxurious mobile phone which has just like hey put it in this cradle which has lens uh, arrangement and all that and have the 100 inch output just connected through a power and the, it cranks the display brightness you may need some cooling in that point but you get the idea you can just have your mobile link turn into a very good uh, basically projector so that million nits is not just a luxury show off it's a desirable thing uh, not to mention vr will also benefit from the however ar handsets basically ar headsets needs this simply because ar right now at night works awesome the moment you go in broad daylight it's like useless so you need in those sort of scenarios they are saying they need minimum of twenty thousand nits otherwise they have to somehow make sure that light directly gets into your eyes which is uh, uh, troublesome to do with even with fancy waveguide technologies and all that so this kind of brightness is needed so these are the main benefit you will have something that can go yellow bright not to, uh, do that much more efficiently and last longer so it's basically turbocharged OLED technology 
so then the question becomes when will you see this as of uh, this as of now as of me making this video uh, three major manufacturers that are into it is basically sony samsung and lg and apple has also invested a lot of money into this and i mean a lot of money poured into this so every tom dick and harry is working on it and not to mention there are hundred startups that are making specific products for this specifically that projector side that i specified so you can easily expect by 2025 high-end equipments will start using that same way oled first started to come in high-end equipments then it started to come down to us same will happen with uh, basically micro ready you can easily see that heck right now you can buy that but again right now the price is like if you have to ask the price you can't afford it so right now you can buy Samsung wall and uh, basically micro LED singles from uh, LG but again right now the prices are like uh, you must have at least one yard two three Ferraris uh, one eight Lamborghinis and all that so right now they are like you know show off kind of piece but again over time they will become like okay high end equipment like if you can save off money enough money for long enough you will be able to buy that after that it will become slowly over time it will become uh, more routed but this technology truly has the advantage of removing OLED fr from everything and removing LCD from everything because right now you still see LCD everywhere uh, because OLED's uh, brightness limitation and short lifespan this can truly kill off LCD it's like yeah LCD is gone so and wherever you need flexible display you will use it, OLED so this can truly truly kill LCD so that is a very big thing and you also have to understand this aspect that as our technologies are going the amount of time it takes from uh, like you know concept to actual product is shrinking like uh, uh, I saw some designs somewhere in like you know basically OLED technologies like yeah in 1990 somebody figured out hey we can make OLED it took many many years before somebody made a mobile phone it took many many years before i can afford that so right now that time is shrinking so people can easily expect by 2030 this um, micro led to be like yeah yeah my projector is micro led my uh, you know the smart camera is micro leds and all that jazz i can easily see that so this was my presentation on micro LEDs. I hope you liked it, learned from it. In that scenario, please click the like button if you liked it. And if you didn't like it, didn't enjoy it, I urge you to press dislike, press it twice to show me your extra disappointment. Please leave a comment because I reply to all of them. Subscribe, press the bell icon if you have free. And as always, thanks for watching.